I wanted to make for you today a revamped oat cluster video, not because the recipe has changed, it hasn't, but because the process I use has changed a little bit. I've made it a lot easier and so I wanted to share that with you. Hey everybody, this is Dylan. There are a lot of reasons why I love these oat clusters and I know you do too because we are always posting about them in the Well Your World Facebook group. But anyway, I have a little bit of a binging problem after dinner. I'll eat until I'm completely full at dinner but then I'll want to keep eating other things. I definitely binge less often than I used to but if I'm going to do it, I want it to be something like this which is totally SOS free, no added salt, oil or sugar. They're amazing to travel with and to just have at the ready anytime. I'm literally going to make a 10x batch of oat clusters and then I'll freeze the extra ones so that I can eat them over the course of, I don't know, a couple weeks or something. So let's just go ahead and get started. The first thing that I'm going to do, I think maybe in the last video I did it with applesauce. I can't remember now, but I'm doing this with flax seeds as the binder. I like to grind my flax seeds, you know, every couple of weeks so that they're staying pretty fresh and then I store them in the fridge. Grind them up. There we have some ground flax meal. So for every one banana, or well, a single batch is one banana, I'm going to use about a tablespoon of ground flax meal. You could probably get away with less if you wanted or you can use one or two tablespoons of applesauce for each banana. So all I'm going to do is take 10 tablespoons of flax seed and I'm going to add some water to it. There's four, there's eight, one, okay I pretty much used all of it. And now I'm going to add water. I don't really have a measurement to water. It's maybe two to one but you just add enough water so that you can loosely whisk this around and then we're going to just let it sit and get gummy. Okay, so you can see just about how loose that is. It is not that critical. This is going to gum up pretty good. A lot of the water is going to be gone. But if you have a little bit of sitting water on top, it isn't going to mess things up very much. Okay, set that aside. Also here, by the way, I've got 10 cups of oats. So for every one banana, it's going to be one cup of oats. So get that going. Okay, so here's where I've streamlined things a bit. I used to mash the bananas by hand and then chop the dates by hand. I don't do that anymore because I make them in big batches. That can just be a little bit too much of a pain in the butt. So I have 10 bananas here. I'm going to do five at a time in this food processor. I happen to know from experience that it will fit five at a time. So I'm going to go ahead and throw five bananas in. I use the cheapest dates I can find. These are from Costco. They're just the cheaper ones, the deglets. I'm going to put in for every banana I'll put in. You can put in anywhere from zero to five dates, maybe like around three per, three, four per banana. Um, I'm not, not really going to count, but that's the idea. And these are pitted. Make sure you're using pitted dates or that you pit them yourself. Okay, and for every one banana, I do about a half teaspoon of cinnamon. So this is going to be six half teaspoons. Close enough for five bananas. And then we're going to also do the same amount of vanilla. Rock and roll. Throw the lid on and let it rip for a while. Like, get it really nice and smooth. Okay, that's really nice and smooth. So at this point, I will add nuts. You don't have to use nuts. Nuts are optional, but I'll add about a quarter cup of nuts for each banana. I think my favorite nut to use is walnuts, but I don't have any walnuts, so we're using almonds. And I'm just going to pulse this a few times. You can put it on for a few seconds. It doesn't, it's whatever you like for your nut consistency in your oat cluster. Sometimes this leaves whole pieces of almonds and some broken pieces, whatever. It's totally up to you. And there you have it. Some beautiful oat cluster sludge. And I'm just going to get a spatula. And then we'll just add that, throw that on top. Okay, and now I'm going to do that whole process again because like I said, I'm making a 10x bat. Oh 
Okay, now check out the nice thick flax egg. There's a little bit of water still, so no big deal. It's all good. Dump it in. Okay, now it's just a matter of stirring it up into a nice dough and then we're ready to bake. So here are some of the things that you can do. I have added, be careful, I've added straight up cocoa powder before and given them sort of a chocolatey flavor. But again, be careful, chocolate is calorie dense. Uh, what else? I have never done it, but you could add like coconut flakes, you know, totally plain old coconut flakes. That could be good. I've added some fruit to these before. I've added blueberries. I've also added the fruit to the food processor to give it sort of a blended fruit flavor, like with strawberries or blueberries. So there are a lot of things. You can take it to the next level in any way that you like. Let me know what you do though. I'd love to hear about it. Okay, that's that. At this point, we're just going to make nice balls, get your hands clean, and get in there. Get the kids in on this. I don't know, what is that, like a two inch ball? We're just going to lay them out. They don't rise or change shape, so you can just, you know, get them nice and close to one another without worrying about it. The only thing I recommend is that you flatten them just ever so slightly because we're gonna flip them and when you flip them you don't want them to roll all over the place. So I like to flatten them out just a little. That one's too big. Oh uh, yeah. I used to flatten them out like cookies because I was afraid that the middles wouldn't be done enough but that's not really an issue and it just takes up more space on the baking sheet so now I just kind of I think I'm gonna leave them as balls most of the time from now on. We're still calling them oat clusters, so don't go thinking we're gonna change the name or anything. All right, we are ready to go. I thought I was gonna fit it all in one oven load. I could have done 11X instead of 10. Not bad. So now all I'm gonna do is put them in the oven for 20 minutes on each side. You can do a little less on the second side if you want, but all we're gonna do is 20 minutes, flip, 20 minutes, done, eat. So what if I like my soy milk with some ice cubes? It's delicious, you should try it. Mm-hmm. So there you have it, like 50 oat clusters or so, and they are hot and delicious. Mm. Again, you can go longer if you want them to really dry up. You can do any number of things with this batter. Have fun with it. I hope you like it. Post your pictures in the Well Your World Facebook group if you make them. I'm gonna freeze them and they'll last a few days, I hope. That is all for now. Thank you for watching this video. Please like the video if you liked it. Subscribe to the channel and check us out at wellyourworld.com for the live interactive cooking show where we're making recipes like these and many others, but also interacting together, talking about calorie density, social pressure, all of your challenges as you continue your health promoting lifestyle. Thank you for watching. Bye.